And what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and create a, a simple contour toolpath uh, for a laser or water jet or, or plasma style of cut. Uh, so I do need to pop over to my toolpaths manager on the left hand side, go up to my machine tab, and I'm going to go ahead and pull in my Mitsubishi laser. We'll let that populate. And again, just, you know, basically it's a, it's, it's a mill, except, you know, it, it outputs um, for laser. So just using the standard milling toolpath, so things like contour is what you'd use here. Now for this, I do want to go ahead and set a, a specific entry for this toolpath, something I'm going to need to do for all three of these uh, before I save them out as source. So in my level manager, I'll make sure that I am on the correct level. And I'm going to go up to my wireframe ribbon. I'm going to go ahead and create a point position. Uh, I'll just make sure that I'm making uh, regular points, and I am. Go up to a point position, and then I'm going to hold down my shift key right here about the midpoint of this line while I click. So a shift click, which brings up my little dynamic gnomon. I can go ahead and grab that, move it, eh, let's say a quarter inch or, or a half inch. I'll go a quarter inch, positive X, enter, enter, enter. And then that point actually gets placed, you know, relative to where I clicked. Uh, anytime in Mastercam uh, for quite a while, if I need to locate a point or, or, or locate an object based on a point or a depth based on a point, if I shift click, I can then use that gnomon to adjust relative to where I'm going. So now that I've got a good sort of entry or burn in point for my, uh, my laser, since I don't want to start it right on the edge of the part, or that contour, I'm gonna pop over back to my toolpath manager. I'm gonna to go up to my toolpath ribbon and I'm simply gonna grab just a simple 2D contour. You know, this is a profile burn or cut, however you wanna call it. And that's kind of really all I need there. So I'll go ahead and start off with a, a contour. And since I am using an entry point, I'll go ahead and start with a point chain and I'll go ahead and select that point that I created. Then I'll switch to a uh, just a regular closed or looped chain and I'll go ahead and put a clockwise motion on there. Okay. Now I'll make sure my lead in lead out that I'm picking up that entry. Uh, if I might have to adjust the start point otherwise, but we'll see what we get. I'll go ahead and say, okay. Uh, for a tool here, now I, I do have a very actually special tool for this. And, uh, well, I don't have a special tool is what I'm, what I'm getting at here. Um, so I actually need to kind of create a real simple tool here. Um, to sort of mimic the, uh, the diameter of the laser or the nozzle of the water jet or the, you know, the diameter of the plasma, um, just, just so I get kind of a realistic uh, you know, view and back plot and, uh, and verify. So I'm just going to right click and, and just create a very quick tool. Um, this will just be a flat end mill and uh, believe it or not, the cutting diameter of this tool is going to be 4 thou. Um, and if I zoom in, <laughs> uh, it is there. There is a quarter inch, or sorry, quarter inch, a, a four thou, you know, tool that's going to sort of, uh, again, mimic what my laser looks like. Uh, I'll just give it a, a slightly um, better name. I'll just call it laser. Again, you can, you know, get more uh, specific down the road if you want to, but we'll just call it a four thou laser. Okay, perfect. Um, I'm going to go down to my cut parameters next, and I'm just going to set this up as a real basic 2D contour. So uh, computer comp is fine, comping to the left, 2D contour, no stock to leave on the walls or floors. Um, one thing I can do with a laser uh, is, is I no longer need to roll the cutter around sharp corners, uh, not, not as much a concern. Um, so I'll just go ahead and put that to none, so I'm okay making my good 90 degree corners. Uh, no depth cuts, no breakthrough, no multi-passes, certainly no tabs. And I do need to look specifically at my lead in and lead outs. So I'm going to turn off the exit entirely, and I certainly don't need any overlap. Um, and I do want to go ahead and use an entry point. Since I, I went and chained that, uh, I want to make sure that the, the toolpath is picking that up. Now, I'm fairly certain that I placed the point there uh, to the right of the midpoint of that line. So I'm going to leave enter and exit at midpoint on closed contours turned on uh, to see if I get a straight across move there. If I don't, if that's not working, I can just kind of adjust the start point relative to that point. So, you know, I'm not, you know, moving in, you know, in a diagonal motion or an undue, duly amount of distance. Um, finally, for linking parameters, uh, for the most part, uh, top of stock and depth can, can both be at zero. Uh, and incremental, that's perfectly fine. Uh, fee plane retract obviously just need to be, um, you know, high enough to, to essentially, you know, make sure that the nozzle 
or the the aperture is going to clear anything on the top of that table. And 200 and 250 thou should be should be plenty. This material uh, is not terribly thick. So I'm going to go ahead and generate this first toolpath just to again kind of see what that's going to look like. Um, I do believe I am seeing if I zoom in here. Yeah, I'm getting a nice straight move from sort of my burn or entry point straight over and then into the contour. And that's kind of what I wanted to see there. Uh, I'm not moving to the start of that entity. I'm moving right to the midpoint. So that looks pretty good. Uh, again, I'll do a quick back plot on that. Um, I will turn off uh, my holder uh, just because it's slightly blocking my view. And it might be actually hard to see the tool. Um, but we'll go ahead and we'll step that through back plot really quick just to make sure we're tracking. Again, it uses a the graphics will kind of tell you even if you can't see the tool and and that looks pretty good so very satisfied with that so we'll exit back plot i'm not going to post out code or anything specific what this is going to be is this is going to be a source file so the 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 actual nesting uh we're, we're, when we're determining quantity and all of that kind of stuff is going to happen in, in another part file uh, this one is just to sort of get me going um, and the nice thing about using source programming or source file programming is you know down the road when I have to do a, another sheet or you know another run on these, um, I have all those source files source files available, and I'm just basically determining quantity and priority when I determine how many of you know each I'm going to need. So with that toolpath saved, I'm just going to do a file save as, and I'm just going to go ahead and put this kind of right back where I got it from, and I'm just going to call this uh, this was an end piece, and I'll just go ahead and tag that as a source just so I can find it again easy. There we go. And I'll go ahead and hit save. 